hello it's Sarah and I wanted to come back and share <clears throat> I just got this Daler Rowney let me hold it right here Daler Rowney is the brand name FW primary color set of the acrylic inks okay so this is a uh, let's see where it says it FW acrylic inks right and I've seen these a lot now it's a six set and I'll tell you the colors um, they come in these bottles and there's a lot in here um, actually it's just one fluid ounce but because it's in a it's ink it's an acrylic ink it goes a long way um, so I've just been experimenting and playing around this is my Strathmore um, visual journal this is the watercolor paper and I should probably do it on uh, my I have another one <coughs> the mixed media but this is 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper so I've just been kind of playing around and this page I basically put a few drops I'll do it again a few drops of the pink first now let me talk about the colors in the in the primary set you get process magenta and you also get scarlet red so there this is the difference between them I don't know if the camera will pick it up but there is a difference the red is way more orange looking and the the magenta is definitely pink this looks more orangey red um, the yellow is called lemon yellow you have a green emerald green beautiful green color this is I think this is my favorite this is called process cayenne man this is a pretty color I just love the color of this blue and then you get the sepia color which is just a brown so I'll show you what I did so this is the magenta the process cayenne I guess it's called process yeah and I just did spatter with the yellow um, all I did was put a few drops of the magenta first and sprayed it with my water bottle and closed the book so it kind of came back with that like all this texture is just like kind of like I want to say a, a dendritic print I get that from cat hand um, and I let it dry I kind of um, dried it with my um, heat gun too but I just wanted to let it dry because what I did previously if you try to blot it you take up all the pigment it doesn't stay bright so then I did the same after that was dry I did the same thing with the blue just in a few places because I wasn't sure if it was gonna turn to mud well I did red and blue thinking purple you know and it didn't mix once it was dry it didn't mix like the blue layered on top of the red and then when that was all dry I spattered with yellow and look it didn't turn orange it stayed yellow on top of the red so that's one thing I've kind of discovered by doing this is if you layer them they stay true the colors stay true they don't turn or um, blend together they don't reactivate in other words so it's different than um, say your um, the inks like the delusions which is a water-based ink and it they mix they reactivate when you put them on top of each other or you re-wet them so that was one page I did then I just like did this kind of sketch which is um, very sketchy I didn't you know not even a doodle and I just tried to paint with them I put some of the paint in the in this little holder and just used a brush a round brush and basically oops I, um, I just tried to paint with them and see what they did I floated and I just did a few let's see um like this blue this blue is so beautiful I'm just gonna put it let's see right here I'm just gonna but look at that oh my gosh can you see this is such a pretty color so this is on watercolor paper this is the um, full strength so I haven't diluted it with water or anything I, I haven't even added water to my brush because it's a liquid acrylic paint you don't have to add 
water to it and it just flows right off the brush very very nicely see that um, if you wanted to watercolor with it you probably could just you you still would have to either pre-wet the surface or but I'm going to show you what happens when you wet this so that's just full strength I'm just gonna and I'm gonna squirt it oops let me back out a little bit squirt it now watch what happens look how much it what is that called it's called something it's a watercolor but look and then I tip it and it it kind of distributes it right into the rest of the paper now it didn't tend to go into the other areas that were painted but it went into the whiter areas so that looks pretty I'm I like that a lot and I'm just gonna mop up this edge but watch what happens I'll leave it full strength so I've squirted it and I'm just gonna blot this side of it look how much of the pigment comes up though so if you want that strength of color you have to let it dry so that's what I've kind of but it wiped it pretty much and this is watercolor paper I told you it wiped right off what I did before um, all this writing is when I use my dip pen so I did let's just do that again this page was kind of like just a fail I wrote just have fun and I painted it and like it just got muddy and then I just painted over it with green and blotted it with my paper towel and see all the blot marks so it's interesting I mean you know what let's try to cover this I want to cover this with the red I'm just going to show you okay so let's see if it'll cover and I'm just going to apply you have this dropper in here look how gorgeous the color is though oh my gosh so pretty and I'm just using this big brush no water it had water in it but it's not dripping and I'm just going to see if I can cover up that green pretty good I mean it's definitely got a darkness to it because it's not over white but I think that covered it and you know what I'm going to do next is the technique I did on the other page I'm going to do some spatter with the blue I have some blue in this little thing let's see what this looks like while it's still wet I just want to see if it turns purple because you know blue and red make purple I just this color is so gorgeous this blue color I mean let me let, let me just drop a couple drops on there and see if they distort or disperse that's the word I'm thinking of because see it because it was wet because the red was wet when you do the drips or it's just sliding off there's so much ink I'm gonna put that back but see that the blue is kind of like sliding off the red it's not really dispersing into it it's just sitting there the spatter looks good though I'm not gonna squirt it because I really don't want it to um, just all the red to come off but it stayed I would say it stays true the color stays true it doesn't blend see the blue I mean yeah this part right here I don't I guess it looks like mud I can't really tell but the red is a gorgeous color it covered that green I mean that was on top of green right so what else oh I actually used my dip pen and this is I was playing with um with Maya we were playing with sprays the other day and this is um these are just my Diane Reevely sprays I'm pretty sure we might have used some of these too I think we were doing dripper drippage I don't think that no I think we just used the sprays anyway this is um hot pressed watercolor paper so I just want to show the difference if I want to do some um writing like with your dip pen you just dip it in the ink it's acrylic ink I mean it's not India ink and just you can use it as a color to write with with your dip pen this is a very wet page 
page isn't dry so it's not writing but I'm going to just put this here and close that for a second bring this is just a piece of hot press watercolor paper it's much it's smoother and just show you I mean this thing writes gorgeous with this really nice you are my sunshine and it, it I mean it holds a lot this is the um, I'm pretty sure this was called the sketching set um, of the speedball um, dip pen sets and this is the longest nib they have and I can write I can really write with this one. This one just holds a lot of ink or something. It really works well. But these can all be used with your dip pen. So if you, for now, I only have black and white India ink, but I wanted to show you another thing. So on a smooth paper, it writes better. It doesn't write on um, watercolor paper as well. Um, I wanted to show you, oh, this is just some of my um, five minute watercolors man I need some help with watercolor it's not as easy as it looks okay this was I did the sepia now there was something behind it I didn't like it but I wanted to see what this color looked like this is the sepia and it's uh, brown I did that and then I spattered with yellow and that went into it maybe it was wetter the brown must have been wetter than um, when I just did it on here because this kind of bled more or something. Anyway, um, look, I'm just trying stuff, right? Um, but this look, this was really cool, the way it, it dispersed into it. And all the other colors are kind of poking through now. So it, it actually, I put brown on top of that. And it, it actually looks cool, right? Um, this one is another page I didn't love. I, ha I think I had doodled something on there and painted it. Um, and I gessoed over it. So I just, a th very thin coat of gesso, and then the blue. So this is this, um, let me put this lid back on. This is the cayenne, no, process cayenne, C-Y-A-N. Um, and it, um, it covered really nice, I think, you know, for a thin coat. I just did again, I put the drips. And then I used my dip pen and wrote with the sepia. So now I have a brown um, ink that I can use with my dip pen and watch this. This is what I was going to show you. I already did it once But I take my water bottle and squirt it and nothing happens. It doesn't reactivate. You don't lose it And so it's dry once it's dry look and I'm even wiping it with a paper towel. It didn't move It totally stays on there so as a um, an ink more of an ink for your dip pen and stuff it's fantastic like it does not bleed at all now if the sur if your surface is dry you're fine but it will bleed out like when I tried to um, when I did this one and I was um, like writing around things like let's see what color haven't I tried the green I'll try the green with a dip pen um, now and the page is pretty dry too I would say and it's bumpy. See, I think I like writing on a smooth surface with this kind of pen. But I did outline things. And it, it's not bleeding out. Like, it's staying where I put it. Um, and I found sometimes with the India ink, it would bleed out. If I say I put a little too much down on my surface, the India ink tended to bleed, like, into the paper. Um, so what else did I want to show you? Um, I'm just going to show you that um, one technique that I did, this one. So I'll show you. This is just water, 140 pound watercolor paper. What colors should we use? I used pink, yellow, and blue. So let's use red and green. It'll be Christmassy. But they shouldn't blend. They shouldn't blend. This is called scarlet. So I'm just going to take, oh, wait a minute. I think, you know what I'm going to do? Squirt the paper first. Just give it a little misting. Uh, I don't have any in my dropper. See how, like, the wetter it is, 
it starts to bleed out but I am gonna spray it and get it to go a little further and then I'm gonna close the book or just one more squirt look at that then I'm gonna close the book see how it like it has an orangey tint to it that's scarlet kind of getting it on the pink now watch what happens Oh, it didn't stay, but I can pick up some of it, right? I kind of like when you pick it up, if I just pick up the really thick parts. But see, that's pretty, right? It's good for drippage. That's the other thing I should show is just drippage. I've seen a lot of people just do, uh, I'm going to do it this way, just some drippage. My book is weird. Watch this. If you just take it and go down the page like that, I know my camera's up and you can't really see what it's doing. That is freaking cool. And then if I spray it, oh, down on the drips. I'm going to let this dry. I'm not going to blot it. Look. That's cool. I want it, to, I don't want to blot it because I want it to stay dark and light. And the page is quite wet. But that's a cool effect, right? It looks like vines and branches. And then if I added green in there, or that was green. If that was green, I could put flowers on it or something. <clears throat> this is stuck to my other page. So anyway, I'm just playing. And I, I'm really glad I did this because on YouTube, there really wasn't a lot about these, um, these FW acrylic inks more than just using them with a brush. So like if I have this watercolor brush and I just take some of this blue and put it down. Man, I love that color. That color is so pretty. Oh my God. Look at that though. It looks, this is the scarlet and it looks red, orange, and yellow. All right, so this is the blue. And as you add water to it, so you can dilute it and get it down. This is what I've seen other channels do just basically show you what the color looks like maybe I put too much water on there and of course you can spatter see spatter is just a given spattering with these is like a no-brainer because they're already fluid you know um, let me show you yellow I haven't shown you yellow and look, this is just, look, there's blue on here. So what if I get blue on my yellow? Does it turn green? Yeah. So when they're wet, obviously, it's going to blend. But when it's dry, it didn't. It stays, it stays true. So I'll just put this in an area by itself. And that's called lemon yellow. It's very yellow. So the, I'm really loving, you know what, they have these in fluorescent colors and um, pearlescent colors. So that, I think I may invest in, in at least one of each of those. And I know they sell them individually on joggles and um, I think that's all I've seen because Amazon has the sets. They have a set of fluorescents, a set of pearl essence and I these were $30 this sit, six set this is the primary colors and that's just a lot and without a coupon on Amazon I'm not going to get they only had the primaries at Michael's <clears throat> and I use a coupon <clears throat> but without a coupon where's the green I can't see it here it is I just want to put a little green um without a coupon it's, it's a lot. Like, I'm not going to spend $30 because I may not use them. I just posted a video about shopping for supplies. And um, 
I think I need to play with these or else I don't get any more. But maybe just one of each, one neon and one um, fluorescent, or um, one neon, one fluorescent and one pearlescent. So this is the pink. See the difference between the pink? Let me go back up. This is the pink and that's the red. See how I said it's a much more orangey red? I'm going to put a little drop over here. I really like it. I mean, I think I want orange. Maybe I should get like a, a fluorescent orange. Yeah, that could be cool. But when you put it by itself, it really looks red. It really looks red, but it's definitely got an orangey tint to it. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. I want to add it over here. See if it makes orange. Not, I mean, yeah. Definitely. It definitely makes orange. Yellow and red make orange, right? And they go a long way. Like this, this is, these being liquid like this, you get a lot for your, you know, for your money. So I mean, $30, but still, that whole page was like a drop of paint, you know, it went down there. So look how cool that is. I think I just want to do that on a bunch of pages. And if I let it dry, like I did uh -oh, over, see this, this wasn't, oh man, I got green, I mean blue on it. This is just my playing around book. Yeah, I got more colors on there. But see how they look dendritic, like Cat Hand says? That like pull away of it, doesn't. it doesn't look horrible. I'll dry them. But yeah, cool. This was, okay, so this seems, let's dry it actually. And I'll put another color on and I'll show you how it sits on top of it. I think I'm going to put yellow. I haven't really done yellow. I only spattered with the yellow. So let me just dry this. That's a shame. And look, it is making mud there. Yeah, it made brown there. I don't like that. Blue and red made brown instead of purple. The pink is gorgeous. Yeah, so stay away from the blue and red. But the rest, like the yellow and green and the pink, they all look fine. And if you blot, it kind of picks up. Alright, let me add, I'm going to add yellow to this. So here's the yellow, and I think I'm just going to put it and then I'm going to hit it with water. So you can do it either way. You can spray the paper first and then hit it with water, or you can spray, put the, see look how it disperses. I love that. I'm going to close it. And pick it up. And it stays. Let's drip it down a little. Ooh, lots of drippage. Oh, that's pretty. They definitely stay on top of each other. When you dry it, if you dry the layers first, it does not make mud. It definitely doesn't make mud when you put the layers. Look at that. But when you put wet on wet, that's just, that's amazing. But you got to let it dry. Don't blot or anything because you'll just pick the pigment right up. Um, yeah, this one, these both came out great. Like, And then when you let it dry, you get these darker areas, the dendritic print. Um, see, I don't know if I did the blue. I don't remember how I did it. I know I put the orange on wet paper. That's why it, maybe it bled out too much. So it's probably better to put just drops and then hit it with the um, water and it disperses. So I think we've explored a lot of different options with them. Um, a lot better than the just have fun is poking through. Wow, that's weird. 
and I love this one. This one is my favorite of the um, the spatter that bled out on it. This one didn't do it as much with the um, it was red and blue, and it just but there was stuff underneath it. So maybe if you do it on a clean sheet, let's do it on a clean sheet. One more thing. All right, we'll do one more thing. That is so pretty. OMG. All right, so we're gonna do blue. What color was that? The spatter one. This was red with blue. I think I'm gonna do that again. Or pink. I'm gonna do pink. No, I'm gonna do. No, I'm gonna do pink. <laughs> Sorry. And this is just color with a damp brush and I'm just going to spread it on there we go it's going to spread it on with a damp brush and this was in this had red paint on it before but I'm just spreading it see how because it's so fluid and then you know what I'm going to do I'm just going to spatter with the blue and see what happens and it I hope it doesn't make mud I hope it makes purple if anything right because pink and red make should I mean pink and blue should make purple so I'm just getting some of this straight it's straight blue and I'm just gonna <gasps> OMG that's gorge Gorgeous. It's staying true. It's not making mud. OMG. I'm so glad I did this because I didn't really know what these, that's, that's just like amazing. The color is just sitting there and it's dispersing a little bit. I wonder if I could do, no, oh, I don't know. I just think that's amazing. All right, so we discover a lot of stuff. That's so pretty, so pretty. All right, so let me just, all right, I'll dry that after. So this again is the Daler Rownie, and they did sell this at my Michaels. They had the primary set, and like I said, I've seen them Joggles, I know, has them. I think today is the last day of a sale they're having um, for 20% off. And Amazon has the sets. And I haven't checked Hobby Lobby. I think I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby next week um, and have a look around. And if they do sell the individual ones, um, I am going to get a fluorescent and a pearlescent. At least one of each. Um, so I can try them and see what they're what they're like. And after on a, on a, say a mixed media piece, now it seems like I'm getting it on me. And you know how um, Diane Reevely's, all right, it's coming off. I mean, it's in my nails, but yeah, they're coming off pretty good. They are water based. Yeah, they're coming off. They're kind of in my nails a little bit, so probably not good for your manicure if you do have one. Um, I have sepia under my nails. That looks gross. Um, but yeah, even though this comes with the sepia, it's not bad to have a brown. That is so pretty. OMG. The red. This is the red. But when it disperses out, it looks orange. Look at the red and orange, to, red and yellow together. Layered on top of each other, though. Not, um, so yeah. And this is again on watercolor paper. This one I wasn't thrilled with. I don't know. I, it was I was trying to cover up, and the red didn't. It just turned icky. But this one I wasn't. This one's kind of all right, because it looks like look at all those cool colors. Now if I used a fluorescent or a pearlescent, that might be awesome. Now and and don't forget you can use them with your dip pens, so you can use them to write with. And you don't have to go buy other India ink colors. I have um, the Speedball um, black and white. But if, if I want to write with a color, I have all the colors I need. Alright you guys, hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.